over about the last year, I've had a few people contact me about their Farmall M and Farmall H belly pumps not lifting whatever implement they have it hooked to. And, you know, you try to talk to somebody through an instant message or an email, and it's like, well, I'm not really there to see exactly what's going on. But in this video, I'm going to show you what I do to get the most out of my belly pump on my Farmall M and uh, just getting it ready for field work. We've been wet, but we're not going to be wet much longer and my fields dry fast. So here's what I do when my belly pump decides it doesn't need to go to work that day. So the first thing I do is what you should do too, and that's check the oil. What I do is I open up this top pet cock right here, open her right up, open wide. And when I don't see anything pouring out of it, I come up here and pour oil into it until I do see something coming out of it, and then I know I'm full. Now this is a new oil filter as of about six months ago, so I'm satisfied with that. Uh, I don't have a whole bunch of hours on this tractor as I guess to be expected. So, hey, it's time, man. Oh, we are dripping. We are dripping right there, okay. I'm guessing you can see that, but trust me when I tell you it's dripping, so we are full. We do not need to add any. And there you go. There's your dipstick, folks, on a farm all am. For you new viewers, let me introduce the star of the day. This is a 1945 Farmall M with a Schwartz front end on it, 15538s, rice and cane. I put an electronic ignition in it, and it just it it just purrs like a kitten. It didn't lose its mitten. And back here we got a set of International 370 14 footers, and uh, those are 20 inch blades. And I can tell you, 14 foot, 20 inch blades, or don't even bother. You keep your cute little 10 footers. Now what I did, because I know there's a couple of you that have messaged me and said, oh, I, I, I rebuilt the pump or got a new pump, belly pump for my M, and it won't lift up my whatever, whatever. Okay, well this is what you need to do. Go get yourself a four inch cylinder, a four by eight, and it'll lift a house. I don't make promises in life, but that's one I'll guarantee you. Unless your pump is just absolutely shot. And it could be, who knows, these come out of the factory between 500 and 800 PSI. And I think this is about the year they switched over to the stronger pump. So I figure 800 out of the factory, probably 600 tired. 4x8 inch cylinder, we're good to go. Well, you saw how slow that lifted it, the, the disc gang itself. 
and that tells me I need to add fluid. Now I do have the dipstick in here. I know a lot of guys talk about their dipsticks falling into the bottom of their pump and uh, I can tell you it's a long ways up there up that stick but the key to these things is really you know a lot of people will be like well how much how much fluid do I put in do I just go by the stick no you go till it works and I do use high tran in this M and the main reason I use that is because in the event that now these discs are assigned solely to this tractor but in the event that I needed to hook the 756 up or something like that to it I want to be able to do that and not mess up my MCV pump and tractor in general so I just go universal high tran um, I know John Deere makes the high guard it's probably just as good a stuff but this is four red and it ain't the shed so I get my flex tube funnel down in there and just kind of hold it like that the the five gallon bucket is just about empty so it shouldn't give me too much of a problem dumping it in there by one hand so if you look on the dipstick the full mark is between there and there and that's where they want it and I get it but with these old pumps and these old machines there's exceptions to the rule let's see if it works better now all right so we're gonna drop the dipstick back down in in the hole it's in the hole and I'm not even gonna check it actually yes I am gonna check it I'm gonna check it by lifting and lowering the cylinder and seeing if it's any faster my thing is when I come around my corners I lift so it doesn't put side stress on the blades and the bearings and that's a good thing let's check this out see if it helped I should probably move Big Red out of the way so it's not in the Big M's way. Let's go ahead and regulators mount up and here. Yeah. That's what I do to get the most out of my old antique belly pump and Farmall M and H for that matter. You experienced guys, leave a comment as to what you may or may not do. Now I know a lot of you guys gave up on these letter series with the old 766 pickup sticks route. Letter series is a go. Boom. Now you can see the discs themselves. They're tilted in the front. I don't have them level. And the reason is, is because I wanna go aggressive on that first pass. And then on the second pass, I'll level them out for smoothing out. And then, uh, you know, run the call to mulcher. I'll probably plow half of this with the C once I get the parts for it. Um, but that's a whole nother video in and of itself. But yeah, you can see the, this is down. There's a crank right there. Uh, I've gone over all the bearings with grease. Uh, I do that every time. Uh, some of you guys are, oh, you don't need grease them every time. Most of you guys are in the camp of yes, you do. And I'm not here to try to have somebody change my mind on it. At my age, I'm, I'm solidified in the fact that bearings need grease. So, you do you, you do you, man. Right now, it's regulators mount up. Let's go, let's grow.